They say comparison is the thief of joy. Ironically, when it comes to tracking our own joy, we love to compare. And it's not limited to humans. It applies to companies, even countries. Maybe especially countries. Because to them, happiness is an operational objective. Nations want to know where they stand, and every year they get a reality check. Thanks to the World Happiness Index. It's an annual and global barometer. It is a subjective ranking of happiness. It, it studies 143 countries where participants are asked to score their lives. Six variables are taken into account. GDP per capita, life expectancy, social support, freedom, generosity, and corruption. And these surveys are compiled. They frame a picture of the nation as a whole, and the nations are ranked on the basis of well-being. Today is the International Day of Happiness, and the latest World Happiness Report has been released. We dissected it for you. Which countries came on top? What were the obvious findings? What was hidden? And what were the big shockers or surprises? We'll discuss that, starting with the ab absolute non-shocker. Let me ask you this. Which country do you think came on top? No points for guessing. It was Finland again. For the seventh consecutive year, this Nordic nation is, has been ranked the happiest in the world. What explains this big win? Experts point to the Finnish infrastructure of happiness. A safe and secure environment, affordable opportunities, relative equality, high levels of trust, and most of all, a policy push. In Finland, happiness is at the front and center of governance, and it seems like the land of unicorns and rainbows. But which other nations came close? Finland was followed by Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, and Israel. That's right, Israel ranks fifth. Given the war with Hamas, this does come as a surprise. Israel has been in the top 10 since 2022. But what explains this jump to top five? The rankings are based on a three-year average, basically 2021 to 2023. So big events throughout the years are taken into account, but their impact is muted. So life evaluation in Israel fell, fell sharply, but it only accounted for a third of the average. The timing matters as well. The happiness survey in Israel was conducted after October 7th, after the war broke out. But it was much before the warfare soared. Hence, the result was not as bad as one would expect. And this applies to the ranking of Palestine as well. Its statehood is not widely recognized. But as per this index, Palestine stands at number 103, 103, which is not a great position to be in, but much better than one would expect because the survey here was conducted much before October 7th in Palestine, before life evaluations would have plummeted. So there are some holes in this report. One can point to India's ranking and say the same. According to the World Happiness Index, India ranks at the 126th position, the same as last year, 126 out of 143 countries. India comes after nations like Niger, Burkina Faso, Iran, and Ecuador, nations with a tense political climate and an array of problems. What explains this? According to the report, India's caste system plays a role. So do religious discrimination and unjust developmental schemes. Sure, there is room for improvement here. But putting India behind nations rocked by coups and violence seems like a stretch. And the surprises do not cease here. Older Indians have higher life satisfaction than the young. And this trend is picking up the world over. According to this report, something is going wrong with the young, specifically the Gen Z, between the ages of 15 and 24. They're not happy. Especially in the UK, across Europe, the US and Australia, experts claim Gen Z is suffering an equivalent of a midlife crisis. They point to a lack of jobs, lack of affordable housing, fear about war and climate change, and most of all, social media. Social media is being blamed for robbing the young of their well-being for worsening their psychological state and lowering their self-esteem. So everyone may not agree with the happiness rankings, but if there's one thing we can agree to, it is this. If the young are not as happy as they can be, it should upset us enough to do something about it. 